The agriculture sector in India is still the primary source of livelihood to millions. And so, an ambitious target was set to double farmers' income by 2022-23. A host of ideas have been put in place to do this, including increase in productivity of crops, improved prices and diversification. One such innovation has been the promotion of aromatic crops. How do these aromatics help the Indian farmer? What scientific innovations have helped this sector? How has this pushed our economy and exports? Has this been a step in our journey to attain self-sufficiency? There is uncertainty inherent in farming. One way of helping the Indian farmer is to add high-value crops to enhance earning potential and reduce uncertainty. One such effective idea launched in India was the Aroma Mission, under which a host of economically important aromatic crops including mint, vetiver, lemongrass, pacholi, lavender and rosemary were cultivated. The science for much of this was developed under the aegis of CSIR's Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants or CSIR CIMA. Aromatic plants are more resistant, less prone to pests, with a huge demand in perfume, condiment and flavoring industries. There has been a huge movement towards using natural essential oils which do not contain harmful chemicals in perfumes rather than synthetic perfumes. These crops also yield higher revenues per acre to the farmer as compared to the cereals or other traditional crops. The aim of this mission is to increase the income of the farmers through cultivation of high value and high demand aromatic crops by about rupees 30,000 to 60,000 per hectare per year. Aromatic oils have also become a big source of exports. The aroma sector has shown impressive growth in India at an estimated rate of 10 to 11 percent annually. One important crop commercially cultivated under this mission is lemongrass. Lemongrass is a perennial plant, that is, it is indigenous to India and many parts of tropical and subtropical Southeast Asia and Africa. In India, lemongrass is mainly grown along the Western Ghats, Kerala, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, UP, Assam and Karnataka, besides foothills of Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. Lemongrass, which grows in warm and humid climate with minimal use of water but sufficient sunshine. It has emerged as a cash crop as it involves less labor, less time and ensures a high yield. So farmers in India are switching to lemongrass in large numbers. They invest Rs 8,000 to 10,000 per acre and get up to Rs 55,000 to 60,000 per acre in return. The main aim of this mission is to uh, bring about the rural, rural empowerment uh, by cultivation of uh, aromatic uh, crops and their processing, value addition and also marketing of uh, these oils derived from the aromatic crops. Scientists at the Bangalore branch of CSIR CMAP have been working on techniques for promoting lemongrass cultivation with farmers in the area. The objective of the team here was to develop new, improved, high-yielding varieties of lemongrass which would grow in less time and could also adapt to different environmental conditions. Let us explore the methodology they would use to develop these varieties. First, parent germ plasms, which are living tissue that carry genetic material, are selected. In this case, one would be chosen for high oil content and the other for normal oil content with climate resistance. These are then crossbred randomly. After the random mating, the seeds are collected from one generation. Collected seeds are further evaluated in field conditions. Post the evaluation, a line of plants with high oil content are selected. If the selected lines do not have the required quantities, some with increased oil content lines are selected for another round of random mating. 
This cycle goes on till the desired result, a high yielding seed variety is obtained. Then the selected lines are evaluated in different agroclimatic zones of India for three to four years. The lines which produce a stable yield of oil rich variety are released for farmers' cultivations. Through this kind of process, scientists here have developed four major varieties of lemongrass which over the years have enhanced the oil yield from 0.4% to 1.8%. Kaveri was the first variety developed that had 0.4% oil yield. Krishna was later developed and became highly popular among the farmers with 0.8 to 1% oil yield. Sim Shikhar, a new species, has the ability to produce 20 to 30% more oil up to 1.8% oil yield and 86% citral content. And Sim Atal has 1.6 to 1.8% oil yield. CMAP Bangaluru conducts various training programs for farmers to create awareness about newly developed crops and techniques for improvement of their aromatic crops. Any variety that we uh, develop in this centre uh, is uh, uh, well advertised through awareness programs, training programs, as well as uh, we use mass media and also like we go to the farmers' uh, uh, villages and do various awareness camps. So we use all kinds of media to uh, uh, make this uh, new variety reach the farmer's field. How do farmers harvest the crop and process it to get the oil? Lemongrass plants are perennial and have a life cycle of 6 to 8 years. The first harvesting is done in about 3 months after planting and subsequently at 45 to 60 days intervals. The harvested leaves can be stored under shade for 3 days without much adverse effect on the oil yield or quality of the oil. They are then chopped into smaller pieces before distillation. Lemongrass oil is distilled from its leaves and flowering tops. In this process, steam generated in an external boiler is introduced into the chamber. The lemongrass is loaded into the top furnace along with water. The boiler is sealed tightly to avoid any leakage of steam. It is then heated from the bottom. When water is boiled, it goes through the herbage and the oil vapour moves into the distillation chamber. The vapour then turns into liquid with lemongrass oil mixed with water. Oil comes up in the vessel and the water stays down. The wastewater is left out through the outlet valve and the oil is extracted separately. This process, though involves higher initial costs, is more efficient and the quality of the oil obtained is superior. Lemongrass is utilized for medical and culinary purposes. It contains citral and geranial compounds that have medicinal properties. So the oil can relieve pain and swelling, reduce fever, improve levels of sugar and cholesterol in the blood and also have antioxidant properties. The citral also gives it a pleasant fragrance which is why it is used in making herbal products, detergents, scented soaps and insect repellents. The oil derived from this lemongrass is rich in citral which is uh, uh, nothing but uh, composition of geranial and uh, uh, neral, which are aldehyde compounds, and these, uh, besides their essential oil value, they are uh, used for uh, deriving alpha and beta ions. And uh, alpha ion is used in flavor and fragrance industry, whereas beta ion is used for the uh, preparation of vitamin A, which is again highly useful for the country. India is currently the largest producer of lemongrass and about 80% of the produce is being exported. The essential oil is being traditionally exported to West Europe, USA and Japan. Most of the essential oils were being imported from various different countries. And now, uh, uh, like uh, since the area in uh, aromatic crops has expanded significantly uh, due to the intervention of aroma mission, now uh, at least in lemongrass and uh, pomerosa oil, India has become the leader in uh, exporting the oil and uh, uh, Indian uh, market has become self-sufficient. Science, pushing up boundaries of knowledge and expertise, which in turn helps the Indian farmers increasing their income and their sense of security. What are other scientific innovations developed for farmers for other aromatic plants? 
keep watching for an in-depth exploration of the geranium. We have seen how aromatic plants like the lemongrass help the Indian farmer. Another aromatic that is today cultivated in India is geranium. This plant was originally brought into India from South Africa. With a fragrance similar to a rose, geranium is used in the making of many perfumes and oils. It contains geraniol, one of the primary components in rose oil, contributing to geranium's rosy smell. The oil has chemicals like citronellol that gives it antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and antibacterial purposes. We paid attention to the techniques which is focused on three things. First is of planting the saplings. Second is the process of protecting it from rain. And the third is how the soil should be, in which these should be planted. There is no modern technology used in it, just a simple one. There is polythene and a cover which is easily available in the local market for the farmer. The semi-protective shed also reduces the cost. Earlier the cost of each sapling was Rs 35. Now it has come down to Rs 2 per sapling. And the farmer's profits have also gone up substantially. हम जब मेंथा की खेती करते थे तो हमें इतनी प्रॉफिट नहीं हो पाती थी लेकिन जब से हमने जेरिनियम की खेती की है तब से जो है हमारे घर जो अर्लियर व्हेन वी यूज्ड टू ग्रो मेंथा द प्रॉफिट वर नॉट दैट गुड बट एज वी स्टार्टेड ग्रोइंग जेरिनियम द प्रॉफिट्स आर मच बेटर नाउ वी हैव बिल्ड आवर होम्स एंड कुड आल्सो अफोर्ड बेटर एजुकेशन फॉर आवर किड्स आई वुड रिकमेंड अदर फार्मर्स टू ग्रो जेरिनियम टू इंप्रूव देयर इकोनॉमिक सिचुएशन अधिक से अधिक मात्रा में इसकी खेती करें और इससे जो है आर्थिक स्थिति सुधरेगी। The institute has also helped the farmer work out which varieties to grow depending on the availability of water, salt content. These plants grow well in North India. The essential oil extracted from this plant is also extremely profitable for the farmer. A crop of just four months costs about eighty thousand rupees, while the profits from this are up to about one point five lakh rupees. The average price of the oil in India is around 12 to 18,000 rupees per litre. With innovations like this, the Aroma mission has been successful in doubling the income of the farmers in the past three years.
By checking with the industry and tapping into the needs of the market, CMAP provides the farmers with information, agro-technology and the required tools. We always stay in touch with the industry to know about the essential oils that are being imported. Then we suggest the farmers to grow the plants of such essential oils which are important for the industry. The aroma sector has shown impressive growth in India. This has also helped in transforming India's image from the producer of raw material to an exporter of finished, value-added products of consistent quality and efficacy. India has made a global impact in the essential oil market where we were once reliant on foreign companies for importing essential oils. With this technique, we are beginning to become Atmanirbhar. CMAP's motto is to make India self-sufficient by helping the farmers to increase their income significantly. And we are aiming to achieve it as soon as possible. Innovative ideas that boost our economy and help the Indian farmer. After the break, we explore Itar, a historic fragrance. Where is it created? What is the science behind distilling this? And how does it add to our self-sufficiency journey? India has a history and culture of aromatic oils. And this culture dovetails into the modern-day perfume industry. At present, the overall size of the Indian perfume industry is estimated at Rs 2,000 crores, which is projected to grow by 50% by 2024. Most of these perfumes are synthetic, which means they are artificially made with various chemicals. Natural perfumes, however, are a growing market since they rarely cause allergies or skin problems and are more environmentally friendly. Ether, a pure form of aromatic oil, is made only in India. This form of aroma is extracted organically from the natural sources like various flower petals, tree leaves, earth and hina. Interestingly, there is mention of this fragrance in the olden Indian epics. In excavations dating back to the Indus Valley civilization, apparatus to make ether has been found showing this aroma is nearly 5,000 years old. Today, Kannauj, a small town in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh, is the hub of making this aromatic oil. Ether was earlier used mainly for personal purposes and was also used in Ayurvedic medicine to cure some of the diseases. But now, itra has been industrialized. To understand how it is made, we visit Pragati Aroma Oil Distillers Private Limited in Kannauj, which has been making itar for the last 80 years. Let us explore the process of distillation and condensation that results in the formation of ether. Flower petals are first poured into giant copper vessels. Water is then poured into the vessel. The mixture is stirred. It is then sealed using paste made of mud. This seals the vessels completely so that no vapor comes out from the vessel. A smaller vessel, which contains a base oil, is connected to the main vessel through a bamboo pipe. The mixture is then heated using wood for hours. The aroma which comes out from the vessel flows through a bamboo pipe and gets captured in the base oil. Bamboo is used because the vapors don't react with bamboo and move smoothly to the base oil. Generally, sandalwood oil is used as base oil because sandal can absorb the fragrance of flower petals from which aroma is extracted. The smaller vessels in which the aroma is captured is kept in water 
so that the vapor inside the vessel gets condensed and turns into a liquid state. So what we have in the smaller copper vessels is the aroma of the flour captured in the base sandalwood oil. After almost 4 to 5 hours, the vessels are taken out of the water and stored in a cooler place. Excessive water which settles at the base is taken out periodically to retain the aromatic liquid. The mixture inside the giant copper vessels is then emptied out and poured into trolleys. This mixture is used for making incense sticks. To get enough sunlight and release excessive smoke and heat, small windows have been made in the ceiling of the manufacturing unit. After cooling off, these small vessels which contain aromatic liquid are again put in water and connected to a giant copper vessel where fresh flower petals are poured and heated. The process is repeated each day for nearly 40 to 50 days so that the aroma keeps on getting accumulated in the vessel to finally create pure ether. It is then kept for 15 to 20 days in the sunlight in copper vessels so that water present in the ether gets evaporated automatically into the atmosphere. At the end, what we get is pure ether, extracted in the most natural scientific way. The Fragrance and Flavour Development Centre of Kannauj is the nodal centre which acts as a bridge between the research of different kinds of ether and other essential oils and the manufacturing industry. It is here that the quality testing of the base oil and various kinds of ether is done in a scientific way. The institute has also helped the ether industry to get geographical indication tag. Kannauj is the only town apart from Grasse in France. There are only two towns where majority of the populations are directly or indirectly engaged in perfumery. Uh, we helped the Kannauj industry to get geographical indication for it. And we helped down, we made the technical report and we uh, supported all kind of uh, technical support from them. Apart from that, we, uh, we are uh, rendering some short term and long term training programs for the people of Kannauj. Ether has a huge market, both locally and internationally. It has a huge market, both domestically and internationally, because nowadays people are shifting towards the use of organic product. The demand is slowly rising in US, Europe and the Gulf countries as well. We believe that in coming years, more people will use organically made perfume over synthetic ones. Today, this ether is exported to over 71 countries. In the year 2020-2021, India has exported ether worth more than 2 million US dollars. And we do a reviving on the same. In India, we have got a lot of geoclimatic zones, a lot of diverse climatic conditions, geographical conditions, where you can produce lots of natural materials in the country with the great strength of the population. So if that population is strength and the natural flora and fauna is used properly, definitely we can go ahead. And with this vision, we are going ahead. It's really great. And I hope uh, the way uh, the lead uh, is being taken by our Honorable Prime Minister, India will march ahead and even we will make even a good fragrant India as well. Flowers and fragrances, such a simple idea. But used effectively, it can push farming, propel our economy and be exported all over the world. Such a simple way in which science, innovations and ideas can push our journey to self-sufficiency.